This is Support a Sexy, episode 430. What's standing between you and your ideal client? It's you. Welcome to Support a Sexy. I'm your host, Elaine Fluker, entrepreneur, author, and founder of Chic Rebellion Media. Five days a week, Monday through Friday, I bring you inspiring women entrepreneurs who share their wins and lessons to help you take your business to the next level. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Support is Sexy. I'm super excited to have you here. You know, it just would not be the same without you. And today we are going to talk about finding your ideal client and what may be standing between you and your ideal client. This is whether you have a service business or you're selling a product, anything where you're dealing with a customer or someone that you're going to offer services to, this is for you. And the thing that might be standing in your way is probably you, but that's okay. We're going to talk about some of those signs, some of those things, and some of those ways that you might be standing in your own way. And I talk about it because I've been through it and I go through it, right? It's always a constant process and evolution, finding out more about your business, but also about yourself. We always say business or entrepreneurship is one of the greatest lessons in personal development. So we're going to talk about a little bit of that today in finding your ideal client. But I do want to share with you, if you are looking for finding new clients, new businesses, new collaborations, getting some mentorship around running your business or growing your business or starting your business, you must consider the Support is Sexy Mastermind. I am so excited about the mastermind this year as we continue to grow great women in the group in our private Facebook group where we really share what's going on in our businesses, the triumphs and the challenges, and everyone really dives in and gives support. So if you want to get access to all of these incredible women, in addition to the support we provide through the mastermind, that includes content, that includes exclusive workshops from women entrepreneurs around the world, video that you can watch or you can listen via audio because obviously you like audio, right? You listen to podcasts. We have the content there for you. So I'm very passionate about making sure that women entrepreneurs get the support they need. Of course, I have the podcast. I'm very happy to have you here listening to the podcast but also getting you around a group of women, even if that's virtually, who can support you. We also have events coming up that are going to be in-person events in different cities, a lot going on in the mastermind. So as you can see, I'm excited about it, but it's not the same without you. So to find out more about the Support is Sexy Mastermind, see if it's a good fit for you, see if you're an ideal client, which I'm sure you are, go to supportissexymastermind.com. Again, that's supportissexymastermind.com. And actually, if you act now, you can go and we're offering a special offer one month free to start. So really, you have nothing to lose. Might as well try it out. Support is sexy mastermind.com. Now, let's talk a little bit about finding your ideal client. And again, what may be standing in the way of you connecting with your ideal client? This is something that I've learned just through experience. This is also something that I talk about with my business coach, Margot Geller, who you all know I talk about a lot on the podcast now. She's fantastic and has been such a great help to me personally and in my business. But I started thinking about this more after one of our recent conversations. And these are the things that I think often come up. If you hear them and you feel like, no, that's not me. Great. You're on the right track. But these might be some of the things that you're not thinking about when it comes to finding your ideal client. The first thing, maybe you're still figuring out your brand yourself, which is okay. Our brands evolve over time. And especially in the beginning, you might be thinking you're going into this business to create a certain kind of service or even a certain kind of product. Then you get feedback from your potential clients or customers and you see that your business or your brand needs to evolve and change. Again, that is fine. I actually think that's part of the process and it's smart to be open to that part of the process. The thing is though, You being confused about your brand or still figuring it out means that your potential client will be confused about your brand, especially if you're still changing it up quite a bit. If you're doing changes over time, everyone reinvents. There's easy ways to make sure that you deliver the message about your new direction, which we can talk about maybe on another episode. 
But still, if you are still figuring out your brand, your client is still figuring out your brand. So that isn't something that's necessarily a solution for you, but just something to be aware of. So you don't beat yourself up if you feel like you're not getting the clients that you want, the right people aren't connecting to your brand or it's not resonating. Well, you know what? Check in with yourself. Are you still figuring it out? If you're not clear, they're probably not clear either. Another roadblock that comes up for a lot of us with finding our ideal clients You have a kitchen sink problem, right? This is something that I mentioned. If you took the course on creating your brand story, I talk about the kitchen sink problem, which comes from the phrase, you have everything in there but the kitchen sink. So I call it the kitchen sink problem because there is such a thing as too much. I'm all for multiple businesses and I'm definitely all for multiple streams of revenue, right? But when you're dealing with one client, think about one client, if you were having a conversation with one person and telling them what you do, well, if you run down the list, of seven different things that you do or seven different businesses, it's going to be overwhelming, not impressive. I think sometimes, you know, I've encountered this when people book to be on the Support a Sexy podcast, all these incredible women. Of course, a lot of them are doing multiple things. But when I read the information about them, I just ask in a form different content or different information that I need to know about them if I'm going to interview them. Some people put several businesses there all these different services that they have and basically just reading it. So without context, in other words, it's completely confusing. And I basically feel like, what are they here to talk about? I don't know what they're going to talk about. What is their business? They have multiple websites. And again, I'm like this. I have multiple businesses and things going on, which is a fantastic way to, again, create multiple streams of revenue. But if I were talking to one client, I wouldn't want to dump on them my seven businesses or however many I have, however many you have. So think about that. And think about if you were on the other end, if you went into a hardware store, but they were telling you about their Uh, retreat business, you'd be completely confused, right? It might be a nice aside, but you're there for the screwdriver or whatever it is in the hardware store. You understand? So make sure that you are giving a clear message when you're talking to that particular client, especially if you already kind of have a sense of what that client might need. They might not need to know in that moment about all your other businesses. So for people who have put multiple businesses on the podcast form, that's great if that's any of you and you're coming up, don't think I'm talking about you. But a lot of them do eventually say, but this is the business that I want to talk about this time. So if it's you're giving me background information, fantastic. But if I were a client and you were to dump all of that on me, I'd be completely confused. So in that way, you'd be standing in your own way because you're giving too much information. It is the kitchen sink problem. Another way you might be standing in your way of your ideal client. You don't have a clear offer. This sort of piggybacks on the last one, right? You have all of these things going on, but the clear offer is not there. What is in it for me as a client? What's the solution that you're providing? What's the pain point that you're addressing? You have to make sure that that's clear so the client, the customer, whoever's going to buy or invest in your product or service knows, okay, this is what this person is offering. Again, maybe you have some other things, but what's the key thing that's going to draw me in that lets me know hardware store, for example, this is where I go to get tools if I have a problem. This is where I go to get solutions to find out how to fix something. I don't need to know, again, if it's about retreats or consulting or all these other things, what is the solution? What do I come to you for? What are you providing? What is your area of expertise? What are you a master in? Make sure that your offer is clear so the client knows where they fit in. What is the solution? What is the pain point you're solving? If I can't tell that, even if I want to buy from you, and I've experienced this sometimes, especially, again, in the beginning of the business when it's taken shape and I was still figuring it out, people would say, basically, I want to pay you for some services just because they liked the podcast and what they felt of me as a person, which was a fantastic position to be in. But I hadn't created anything because I wasn't clear on the offer. So they really just could not pay me because I didn't have anything to offer. So make sure, especially if you have people wanting to pay you, right? Make sure that you're clear about your offer. Again, this can evolve, but you want the client or potential customer to know, okay, this is what this person is uh, offering to people. And not even just for me, if I want to refer other people to you, I have to have a clear sense of your offer. That's another thing. If I feel like, oh, she's doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of the other thing, you might not come to mind, even if I have every intention of wanting to send business 
business your way. So when I talk to people and whether that's through mentorship or just conversations, I'm always thinking about how I can connect people, right? It's what I'm all about. Support is sexy. But if I don't have a clear idea in my mind of what you do, you might not even come to mind in that conversation. And this is true for me and I'm sure for a lot of other people. So again, be clear about what your offer is so your client knows where they fit in and also people can refer people to you. Another reason we might stand in the way of our ideal clients, you don't know who your ideal client is. So that's something that I've been having a lot of thought about and discussions about who is your ideal client. Obviously, you might not know her by name, but you can give her a name, right? The avatar everyone talks about. Who is your ideal client? What does she do? What is she looking for? What is her pain point? How old is she? What is her lifestyle like? Describe to yourself what this person is. And then once you know about her, also describe to yourself or write it down. I'm a big proponent of writing it down, right? Write down who she is, but also how do you work with her and how do you feel when you work with her? What is that experience going to be like and how will she feel as a result of working with you? This is something I ask the women that I talk to for a girl on podcast, our podcast booking service. We have a strategy call, of course, where we go over what the client hopes to accomplish with podcast guesting, but also what do they want to feel or what do they want their client or their customer to feel at the end of some kind of interaction or engagement with them. So that's important as well. But also, what do you want to feel? What do you want that experience to be like? It's never going to be perfect, right? There's always going to be misunderstandings. Things are always going to happen. You never know. Those things you just have to prepare for as much as possible. But overall, ultimately, what do you want to feel when working with this person? What do you want them to feel or experience? What do you hope to accomplish together? Make sure you fill your time with clients who are a good fit for you. Because here's the issue. If you fill your time with clients who are not the ideal fit, you lose the clients who could be the ideal fit because it might just be a matter of space. If you're one person right now and you take on 10 clients who are not your ideal clients just because in the beginning, maybe you're afraid to not have anyone. So you're saying yes, yes, yes to everyone. But then the people who could be the great fit, there's literally just no room for them. So that's one of the reasons to get really clear on who your ideal client is, not just because you're going out there to find them, but also because you don't want to take on people or too many people. Sometimes you don't know, but sometimes you absolutely know it's not the right person or not the right fit. And if you get someone or take on someone that you already know or have a sense or your intuition tells you is not the right fit, it will stand in the way of your ideal client's who are out there. You have to believe that they're out there. Know that they're out there. Don't be afraid to say, this might not be a good fit, but here's other options for you. And that's something I think we have to make sure that we're uh, brave enough to do too. I get it. In the beginning, you might not be brave enough to say, I shouldn't say brave enough. In the beginning, you might be nervous about saying, no, I don't think this is a good fit or however you phrase it. I'm saying it like that to you. This might not be a good fit or you know what? I know someone who would be even better for you. Have some referrals in mind. People love that when you don't take on their business, but refer them to someone you think is a better fit. That actually, I think, goes a longer way sometimes than even working with the person or at least as far as working with the person and builds definitely a level of trust. If you're saying, I already know that I might not be a good fit for you or I know someone who would be better instead of just saying, no, I don't think it's going to work. You could do that too. I wouldn't recommend it. I think make a suggestion of someone else or some other way. Even if you're just, sometimes I just give a free consultation, give some ideas and some feedback. Even if we don't work together, I can always offer you some ideas for things that you can do. So make sure you think about that, who your ideal client is, but also don't be afraid to not take on people you don't think are a good fit. Don't push away everybody. But if you know whether it's through conversation or talking to them or you figure out, well, they might need some other service that you don't provide because you're clearing your services now, right? They might need some other services that you don't provide or overall, it just might not be a good fit. So make sure you have the courage to say no. You know that there's more out there. You're going to believe in abundance, have an abundance mindset. So don't let fear get in the way of you connecting with your ideal client because in the end, it will be better for both of you. And lastly, again, another great piggyback, great segue into our next one, talking about abundance, your limiting beliefs might also be things that stand in the way of you and your ideal client, because either you think 
as we said, you're not thinking with an abundance mindset that the client is out there. So the client isn't out there. The universe is saying, okay, you said the right clients aren't out there. They're not out there. You want to make sure you say they're out there. I'm going to find them. I'm going to make sure I have a clear offer. Make sure I'm clear about my business, not have too much in there. Do all the things you can to line up your business so that it's clear of how the client can enter. You don't know exactly how it's going to happen, right? We always say let go of the how, but you want to be out there networking, talking to people, clearly telling them what you do and believing that the ideal clients are out there. Also, I'll give you an example from my recent experience. Again, speaking of Girl on Podcast, and I'm talking about that because it's a fairly new business. Just launched it, if you're listening to this in real time in March, just launched it in January. So over the holidays, I worked on it, launched it in January. It's been fantastic. And it's been growing at least one new client per month, which is excellent. That's great, especially since I didn't do any pre-promotion or anything with this. So we're growing, building the clients and women that we're able to support. It's fantastic. I have someone working with me, helping me book clients on podcasts. All of that is great. But here's the way that I almost stood in my own way because of my limiting beliefs around girl on podcast. I started off thinking, okay, well, I only want to get five clients. I think five was the number I had in mind for the year. I'm already at three and it's March, right? I'm thinking I'm only going to get five clients because I don't want to get too many. It's going to be too much for me to do and all these other reasons I gave for why I'd only be able to support five clients. Well, that was a limiting belief for me, a couple of reasons. One, there's plenty of women out there who want to get booked as guests on podcasts, who have incredible stories, incredible expertise to share. Why shouldn't girlonpodcast.com be the place, especially if these are women who, going back to what we said before, are a great fit for me. I feel like I'm a great fit for them as far as as their services and what I can offer and helping them get their message out there. So there's that. Why would I limit that? Also, since I'm supposed to be all about support, right? I had to check myself and say, well, wait a minute. I'm thinking that I can only have this certain number of clients because I'm thinking about doing it all by myself. And that's not what I'm about. So now with this business, girlonpodcast.com and anything that I think about and move forward with as far as a business or idea, the first thing once I come up with the idea that I think of is how can I get support for this? And support isn't people paying for it as far as people working with me, investing as a partner, et cetera. There could be that. But really, it's just how would I hire someone to help me with this? Or who is someone that might be a good partner with this? Before I even get to the client's piece, that is what I'm thinking of. How can I get support for this? Now, if I think about girlonpodcast.com and I think about 100 clients, well, I think about how many people would I need to bring into my company or agency or whatever it evolves to become to support me with however many clients I take on. That's how companies become huge companies. As they grow, they bring in more people to support them. Can I do 100 women all by myself as far as supporting them? Absolutely not. And I don't want to, but I can bring in powerful, connected, talented other women and men who will be great for helping to get these women booked on incredible podcasts, also hosted by women, There are a lot of ways for me to get support for that. So all that to say, just as an example, that was a limiting belief that I had. So the universe would have said, "Okay, well, by May, you'll be done. You'll have five clients and that'll be it. That's just what you're going to do. And you'll be doing it all by yourself because that's the way you said you want to do it. No, let's keep going. Let's keep growing. If this is a service that people want and they feel like is very important and can help them and satisfy a pain point and a solution. And for me, my passion is creating spaces for women to share their stories and helping them get out there. My passion is also podcasting, obviously, right? I love podcasting. My passion is making sure that these women entrepreneurs, all different areas have a space to share their stories. Well, why would I limit that? I want that to be as big and as beautiful and as bright as it's supposed to be. I'm not going to limit myself just because of my own capacity. I have to think about how can I get support for this. So for you, make sure you check your limiting beliefs. You have to believe that the clients are out there, right? Abundance, you know the client, the ideal clients for you are out there and you know that you can support them by 
getting support yourself. Now, there might be other reasons. I will say this. In certain agencies, some people don't want to get a certain size. They want to remain a boutique agency. There's things to be said about that. And I certainly, that some of that resonates with me when I do think about the kind of life I want, the kind of businesses I want, etc. But I will say, sometimes we're limiting ourselves before that's even necessary. It's not even about the vision for your company. There's some fear there of you might not be able to support them on your own and you won't. You know why? Because support is sexy. So you want to make sure you bring in the right people, just like the right clients, the right people to support you. And I am very blessed, lucky, happy, so thrilled, satisfied that I have incredible women who are working with me right now on Support is Sexy and on Girl on Podcast. All right, so hopefully that was helpful, gives you a little food for thought around your ideal client. Remember that they are out there. You can find them. Just get clear on your message. Make sure you don't overwhelm them with offers, right? Be clear on what pain point and solution you're satisfying. Don't have limiting beliefs. All right, so thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. And until we talk again, make sure that we're connected on social media at Elaine Fluker at Support is Sexy. I would love to hear your feedback there. And now, until we talk again, always remember that you deserve support. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care.